um, yeah, that super cute card. So what you're going to need is um, two sheets of your 11 by eight and a half cardstock. You're not going to wind up using both full sheets, but you're gonna be cutting them down. You may be, can get away with one sheet, but to be on the safe side, you're gonna need two sheets of uh, your cardstock. I would say grab your DSP for uh, what theme you're going for. So if you wanna do a holiday tower card, grab your holiday paper. We have that uh, DSP right now, the Tidings of Christmas. It, that's on sale. It's on the DSP sale. So that would be a beautiful paper to use for this card. It is kind of a uh, paper eater, but that's the good thing about this card is if, like me, myself, I have a bunch of paper that is now retired that is just kind of sitting around and I need to get it used up. So I've been kind of playing with this. I am today going to be using one of the new papers out of the Celebrations catalog to get you guys so excited about all the fun things that you can earn for spending money. Um, so I'm Danny Garola with Stamp in the Pink Barn coming to you from Tucson, Arizona. It's kind of wet and dreary today. Uh, when I got up this morning, I was going to go take my son in to get him registered for school, but some things came up and I didn't get to do that. So I simply just quickly ran into town, got hair dye, got rid of that plethora of gray that I had going on. So as you can see, my hair's still even wet. So, um, but I wanted to hop on here. I have my live class tonight, so that's exciting. Whoever uh, pops in and sees this that is going to that class, I will see you at 4.30 this evening. Um, so let me get you guys flipped around and just start this card because it is a lot of fun. All right, here is July's host code. If um, you go ahead and make a purchase and it is under $150, please use this host code. If your purchase is over $150, like if you're buying a lot of that DSP that's on sale, um, then don't use this host code. You are going to get hostess um, rewards and I want you to use those. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this card. So this is what the card looks like. Am I, okay. That's, say this is a table and this is what it would be sitting on, right? So I have it flipped up for you guys so you can see it. So there's four sides to it. And then there is a tunnel in the center. Very cool, huh? All right. So what you're going to need to start out with is you're going to need a piece of your cardstock. Go ahead and pick out what DSP you're going to be using to begin with. Like I said, I am using that Celebrations Special Pack, which goes with the, uh, what is that? Peaceful Deer set that is in the new July, December mini cat holiday mini catalog. So these deer can actually be cut out uh, you can't see the full deer there, but it can be cut out with the punch that is in that um, set. Uh, but they went ahead and coordinated some paper in the Celebrations catalog that you could go ahead and purchase that stamp set and punch as a bundle, add a couple embellishments, add maybe some cardstock to match that, and then get this paper for free. All right, it's very cool. These are the flip sides so you can see what each side is like. So this is the paper, it's called Peaceful Prints Designer Series Paper. So that is what I chose to use today because since I made the Halloween one, I wanted to make a Christmas one. So the piece of cardstock that is going to be our inside part, which would be our tower, this is seven and a half. Let me put this over here so in case you wanna take a screenshot. This is seven and a half by five and one quarter. 
Then we're going to come in with our score tool and we are going to score at one and three quarters, three and a half, five and one quarter, and seven. So if you want to take a screenshot of that, go ahead. Okay, so let's get the arm out on our trimmer here. And let's do one and three quarters. We're going to score, not cut. So make sure it's your light gray one. Score that at one and three quarter. Then at three and a half. Then at five and one quarter. And then at seven. Oh. Where'd you get those at? Store. You just went to the store? Yeah. How'd you get down there? Quad. How do you guess? Oh, I didn't know you went down there. Thank you. I guess my son took off to the store and I didn't even know it. Jeez. Nice how anybody keeps me informed. So there's our, our uh, scoring for that. All right, so let's go ahead and score this. I mean burnish this all right so now you can see that made a perfect perfect square now I'm gonna come in with some tear and tape which is not necessary you don't have to use tear and tape but because tear and tape holds so much better I like to use tear and tape on something like this because it is holding quite a bit of paper and you really want to be able to display this card or whoever you're giving this to whoever the recipient is you want them to be able to put this card on display so tear and tape is just a much uh, stickier adhesive it's a lot stronger than glue or uh, snail or seal we don't have snail anymore it's now called seal but now this is gonna be a bit fiddly for me that I can't get it off now because it's humid here. So this is when that take a pick tool comes in extremely handy. All right, so now since I have that, I'm just gonna lay, take my fingers and lay that flat and then push that down. Okay, there is my, my little square cube, right? You following me here? Why is this thing doing this? Then we are going to need, in this same color cardstock, you're going to need 12 pieces, 12 pieces at three and a half by one and three quarters. So this is three and a half by one and three quarters. So there's 12 of those. So you have one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay? Then with your DSP, your designer series paper, you need twelve at three and a quarter, so it's just a quarter of an inch smaller than this piece here. Three and a quarter by one and a half. So it's a quarter smaller than that. Now what I did is I cut four or no what did I do I did three patterns of four so I did one two three four of that side then I flipped that pattern and did another see that's the other side so I did one two three four of the opposite side and then I took this paper here flip two over and did two at this pattern and two at this pattern because I really want some coordinating different because as you can see on here you're kind of flip flopping papers around and coordinating them so it's not all the same okay then you need 12 one and a half by one and a half now these pieces are these that go on these flaps here so again, I came in with completely opposite papers and I did four of this pattern. I did four of the birch, birch pattern, but I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna use this with the red. 
And then I use this same paper here. Or no, I didn't. No, I didn't. That's a different one. I used the one with the little trees. They have little, that same buffalo check, but it's in green and black. And I'm going to use four of those. So four, four, and four for 12. All right. So you got that. You took a screenshot of that. All right, so now let's start adhering some of these pieces together. So what I like to do is I like to grab my 12 pieces of cardstock and then start adhering my DSP to these first. So either screenshot it or if you already grabbed your supplies, you can just go ahead and start making this card because it's an extremely easy card. As difficult as it looks, it's kind of deceiving because it's actually quite easy. Now you can even make this card even more detailed by taking an extra layer and going in between this like an eighth of an inch bigger like say you wanted to do a gold around that, then just do an eighth of an an eighth of an inch bigger. So then your the piece that would be in between there would be, I believe it would be where am I at? If that's three and a half, three and three eighths by one and I don't know, you know what I mean? Just an eighth of an inch smaller. Because math is hard especially when you have COVID brain I mean I've never been strong in math anyways but hmm let me just be honest with you right now tell you some of my flaws in life math is hard never been good at it why my mother is good at math because she compensates for my dullness in math I'm always like hey mom solve this for me but my son I swear he got he got the brains of the bunch because he is so good at math so good at science so he actually took this last school year he took physics because I was doing that in homeschool I had done physics this year so since I put him in public school kind of already a month and a half after school had started and he had already started his homeschool uh, sophomore year, I was giving him physics. So when we enrolled him in public school, he was the only sophomore taking physics because normally that is like a senior, junior class. Um, he struggled in it, don't get me wrong, but he still passed the class. It is a more advanced class. His teacher had even kind of told him that. He was like, you know, it's kind of odd to find somebody as young as you in a physics class. But the home curriculum that I was going to do was different than what they do in school. But neither here nor there. He, uh, he got it done. And he got it done earlier than most. So like I told him, I go, just look at it this way. It's done and out of the way now. You don't have to worry about physics again. And since he's not planning on doing the college uh, path out of high school because he wants to enlist in the military, he, he's not worried about certain classes that you would typically have to take if you were college bound. Okay, so there's those. As you can see, I've got those done. These are not going to be adhered to anything because we're going to put this together all right so what I'm going to do is take this and kind of flatten it at the moment now I'm going to take one of these and put it up here at the top now you can use tear and tape here I'm not going to because I don't need find it necessary on here because this glue holds pretty tight these pieces down then I'm going to take this one and do it down here now 
So you're going to take two and go outwards with them off the side, out the side of the card. Then you're going to take your center one and go inside of the card. So bump it right up to the edge of your cardstock. Don't leave any gaps or anything. And same with this. Run it straight down your uh, score line there. Now you're going to take it and flip it again. Do the same exact thing. But I'm going to do opposite this time. So since I had the check up there, I'm going to do the deer up top and take the buffalo check and do it down below. Now when you're doing this, make sure your cardstock fits. Make You know what I mean? Make sure this can move freely in between these two when you lay them down. That's why as long as you put them up against the close edges and then you do this center one after, it'll work. Okay, so since I did that pattern there, I'm going to do this pattern. Again, I'm just going to put it right in between those two pieces. Okay, flip it again, and here we go again. So did I do the deer up? Yep. So I'm going to do the buffalo check. So see, I told you this card is super simple. To keep my orientation of this card correctly so I don't screw anything up. And my dear. And then what green did I do? Okay, I did the line down there, so I'm going to do the snowflake green. I'm sorry guys, I didn't mean to hit the camera. So, just to let you know, this is bigger than a regular A2 size card. So, if you want to do an envelope, I think this is going to be seven, where's my ruler? This is going to measure, oops, helps if you have the ruler the right way. This is going to be seven, what did I say, by five and a half, or by five and a quarter. Okay, so if you want to lay this in a card, you're going to have to find the correct envelope that this is going to fit in. All right, now look where we're at. We can't really lay this flat to get these done. So now you have to just kind of play around here and get your cardstock. This is probably maybe the, the most difficult part of this card. But what I do is I just lay it on there and then come in with my piece. And I got it a little bit crooked. Ah. Oh, come on. Give me a little bit of leeway. Oh, thank goodness. All right, when you lay it down, make sure you lay it straight because don't do what I just did and get it crooked. There we go. That's better. Now I can lay it down. Okay, and then I'm going to do this one too because since that flap is going to be like that, I can see what I'm doing. But just make sure you line it up with this green one. Now, if you want to, you can take this one. Ugh, that stuff is stuck to me. And this is going to go here. So when that stands up, that piece will stick out like that, okay? Now that might be a little difficult, 
So you might just want to do it the way that I showed you, standing it up. I'm just kind of showing you different ways to make it easier on you. If you want to stand it up and adhere those, you can do that. But you're going to have to get your fingers in between there and push that down. I know I jacked mine up a little bit right there, but you know what? Who's going to see that? All right. So there we have all of those pieces done. Now, the reason why we cut the one and a half by one and a half is we have these pieces hanging out here. So what we're going to do with that is I'm going to take, I think I like this there. And then if I take a, because I don't want just green in the center. So if I take a green there, let me see how that's going to look. And then I'll make sure I put a red or whatever there. Okay. Now flip it and we're going to come here. And I'm not putting these ones on in any particular order. I just know that I used the stripe. Okay, so I'm going to use this one here. Okay, and then that means on that one I did that, that, and then did I put a different one on there? I thought I did a center one. All right, I'm just going to do on this one since it's going to sit like that. We're going to see this one. All right, let's do these first. So that one, that one, that one. And then on this one, I'm going to put, since I've got the two there, I'm gonna put this one here. Okay, and then flip. And then since that's there, that's there, that's there. And I have this one, this one. So on this one, I'm going to do this little piece. Okay, and then I'm going to flip it again and know that that's those two pieces is that one. So then when I flip this again and I have, okay, didn't I do that one at the bottom? Yep. So this one's going to go up here. Okay, so do you see what I'm doing here? Very, very simple. And then we have one more, where'd it go? There he is, right here to do. And I'm just gonna do those little trees right there. So there is that. Now, isn't that just the cutest thing ever? Do you see how I have all the different colors set up on that that you can see? And every time you flip it, you're going to see different paper. So now when this is sitting, you can come in and you can decorate it however you choose. Like this one, I put a couple of little sayings on it. I put the little witch in the moon. I cut out, I die cut with that, uh, uh, what was it called? Cute, oh, I don't even know where it's at right now, but the Halloween one. Where did I put that? Oh, I don't know. But I used the little die from that new set. And then every time you flip it, you see something a little bit different. And then I put a happy Halloween and which way is the candy. And that lays flat as well. So this one I'm not going to decorate for you. I just wanted you guys to see how easy this card is to put together. So you can replicate these on your own and make this 
and hand these out to, you know, probably local people if you don't want to worry about the, the envelope or, you know, Amazon sells envelopes that this would probably fit in. Because it does lay flat, it can go in an envelope. So there you go. I hope you guys make these. Um, if you do, I would love you to take photos of them and post them up on the Pink Barn Stampers group. If you are not a part of that group, please go over there and um, I think it's called invite or no, join. Join that page. Jeez, words are hard. Join that page and you can see other people's creations that they have created and thrown up on that page. Um, so also, if you're watching this at a later date from YouTube, throw up that notification bell. So when I go randomly live like this, you will see a notif you will get a notification telling you that I have a new video up. All right, you guys have a great, I guess, almost close to the weekend since tomorrow's Friday. And I will see you guys on Monday. All right. Have a good one. Bye.